How's it going guys? So back here at Beach of Scaly Beasts again. We've looked at the snakes. If you haven't checked out that video, go back and watch it. And now we're going to look at all the bioactive slash rainforest reptiles and amphibians here. Because Luke has gone bioactive mad. This is just one of the walls. And he's got a few more other enclosures we're going to take a look at. Some rare species you don't normally see. And uh, some beautiful enclosures. So let's start taking a look around. So things have evolved a little bit um, around here and a little bit quickly as well. I used to not really have too much real estate on this side of the garage. I used to keep a few little monitor tubs and rat breeding tubs and bits and pieces over this side. Um, but yeah, I think I discovered Troy Goldberg on, on YouTube and he's, uh, for those that don't know, he's a massive dart frog guy over in the US and he's got this amazing garage with all these beautiful planted tanks and things and I kind of wanted to do something a little bit similar. And I started off with a bit of a hodgepodge of all different sorts of terrariums and bits and pieces. And from there it kind of evolved. It, it kind of got into a bit of a stage where I needed everything to be a little bit more uniform. I needed to kind of neaten it all up and make it look good and make it look like a good display. And anyway, I ended up uh, hitting up uh, Jason Rogers of all people. And he, for those who don't know, he was massively into like leaf tail geckos and bioactive tanks and stuff for a number of years. And, I really have to thank Jason and give him a bit of a shout out in this video too because he helped me along for a lot of these exoterra enclosures, my Miss King system, all my leaf tails, uh, some new animals that I picked up today that we'll check out a bit later. Um, yeah, just a whole heap of heap of stuff. He's really helped me out with a lot of it. And yeah, I think slowly over time I just started kind of collecting exoterra terrariums and you know if I see them come up second hand or a bit of an odd size I might buy new here and there. So you know. Just going to keep my eyes out on Facebook and, and wherever else just to see what's coming up. And, you know, you can always find a home for something inside of all of these. So, from there, yeah, I mean, I just started kind of collecting my weird and wonderful little critters. So, these top enclosures here, these guys are 60 centimetres long, 45 centimetres tall, and they're 45 centimetres front to back. The second row down here, these enclosures are 30 centimetres long, 45 centimetres tall, and 30 centimetres front to back. And the final enclosures down the bottom here, these guys are 45 centimetres long, 60 centimetres tall, and 45 centimetres front to back. So we're just going to start showing you a few critters that are in all of these tanks. And in the last video, we kind of had a quick look at wasabi, my green tree python up in this enclosure here. It's an awesome little snake. We will outgrow this enclosure, of course, one day. But for now, it makes a nice little display. You know, I love having a variety of plants in here, different things like some of the... Bird's nest ferns, some pothos, there's a little staghorn in there as well. A few other plants that I don't remember the name of. <laughs> uh, but it's, yeah, it's a nice little enclosure. He does pretty good in there. I've done it pretty simply as well, you know, there's nothing too crazy in here. The background's actually just an old doormat, so, you know, a few, few little different odds and sods in here. I am planning to redo a lot of these enclosures shortly, so we'll see how it looks eventually. But he's a great little snake, he's just got a little heat panel up there above him. He's got his mist nozzle in here that he loves to turn around every night. All these enclosures too, they're actually um, they're lit up by some LED lights. So I've got these very bright, cheap LEDs off eBay that uh, I've only just recently installed actually. I don't think I've told anybody about those, but they seem to be really helping the plants grow. I've seen it kind of spread the light a little bit more easily than the T5s. Yeah, nice. And I think what that's going to open me up for is I've still got the T5s in there, but I'm, I'm probably going to change up the bulbs in there, maybe chuck some 5.0 zoom ed T, uh, UVBs in there or something as well, just to really nice. supplement the animals even further. And so those lights, are they what kind of Kelvin, are they? I believe they're only 6,000. So okay. I did want something that was like 6,500, mm -hmm. but they're so far so good. Yeah. The, the top row up here is only running on that LED light. They don't yeah. even have the t as a supplement at the moment just because it is a bit warmer in here. Um, whereas the other rows, they've still got that on. But the yeah. plants actually, I think, have gone actually and improved since running the LEDs over the T5. So. That's awesome. That's the thing. A lot of people 
uh, don't really realize when they first get into these sort of uh, live planted enclosures and things like that your UVB light is not going to be enough. You need something that's pumping out a, a good bunch of energy for the plants in that you know 6,000 to 6,500 Kelvin range so the plants can actually grow and photosynthesize and survive. There's been many times before I, I knew that that I'd just chuck plants in an enclosure and be like, oh, they're dead within a few days. So um, yeah, it's all about that energy output and then the enclosure will bring that back and give it to you in uh, some beautiful plants. So in here we've got some little froggos. Yeah, some little Perrins tree frogs. These guys are an awesome little species. They're actually local to the area as well. I physically have them outside wild breeding like mad in the tubs next to the turtle pond as well. So they croak outside, these guys croak inside. It's, uh, it's really loud and noisy sometimes, but it's, uh, it's all good fun. I really like the calls of frogs. I find them quite <laughs> soothing. So. I imagine during the night here, it's just going bonkers here in the room. Yeah. Yeah, it, it can some nights, um, especially with like the common eastern froglets and the green stream frogs and things going off. Uh, some of the some of the other frogs quite, aren't quite big enough to call, or they don't call too often throughout the year, so it's not too bad. But perons and and uh, yeah, the ones that I just mentioned, the green streams and the common eastern froglets, they they go off their head. It's, yeah. yeah, it's good fun sometimes, especially if we get a big low low pressure system or something driving through and a bit of a storm on a hot day, then they all go a bit bit bonkers. The bronze tree frogs are a pretty little frog. I think they're really gorgeous in their own right. So they're quite grey, quite mottled with little green spots and things all over them. And they've got these awesome yellow and black thighs on the inside of them as well, which looks really cool when they're jumping around all over the glass and making a mess. But uh, they're, they're spectacular little frogs. So these smaller enclosures here, I've just recently reset all of these guys up. So I've done uh, some new custom backgrounds on them using a mixture of uh, some canal insulation foam or canal insulation foam. Um, and a couple over here I've done expanding foam backgrounds as well. They've had a few coats of pond sealer and then they've had a few um, different colour shades and things thrown over the top of that. This little enclosure here is actually empty for the time being. Um, but might hatch out a gecko or two this year that can fill it, so that'll be pretty cool. Fingers crossed. Yeah, this little enclosure here has uh, got a pretty cool little critter in it actually. You can kind of see him over in the back corner, it's a Moritz Leaftail Gecko. Yeah, so he's a... He's a Little adult male, I believe. Um, it's pretty young when I bought him, so I just need to find him a, a partner or two. But they're a beautiful little animal, but somewhat local to the area. I think they're a bit more from up your way, to be honest, a little bit further north than you. Um, but yeah, there's a beautiful little critter. I, I just, I've been redoing these enclosures because I wanted to have the 3D backgrounds the whole way around the enclosure, in particular for the leaf tail geckos, because they don't have those sticky toe pads. It just gives them that extra two feet of surface area they can kind of run around yeah. on. So it just makes their enclosure physically bigger for them, especially at night time when they are active. Otherwise, like before they only had the background on the back and they had a few branches and bits and pieces they could climb, which would suffice, but you know, just wanted to up my game a little bit. These enclosures are all running on um, Corey from Fish Organics uh, bioactive kit as well. So I've got the clay balls down the bottom here, layer of fly screen in between there, and then I've got Koya peat and a bit of Yuki mulch and bits and pieces in the top there, with a mixture of his and my leaf litter as well, just to kind of cap it all in and then I'm using my own spring tails and a few bugs and stuff like that that I've been breeding here as well to kind of help clean up everything in the, the ground floor there. So this little enclosure over here is housing a juvenile white neck tree frog. So these guys actually grow to be the biggest frogs in Australia. Not by body mass but by physical size. They're a pretty gangly little frog <laughs> and uh, it's quite cool to see him jumping around inside of this little terrarium. I did have him in a 30 by 30 cube originally and just recently I've popped him across into here because I had the space and you know I wanted to give him a little bit more room to grow. Believe it or not a little frog like that will actually devour a medium cricket quite easily as well which is very impressive. Nice. I've got a very big mouth on him so it's quite, <laughs> quite cool to see him run around and catch a few bits and pieces. But like most frogs you know they're all active at night so during the day they're pretty sedentary so you know mm. they don't really day bask so much. I say that and the guys over in this next terrarium are, are doing just that. <laughs> which is a bit of a rarity. Ah, perfect. Yeah, so these guys are a bit of an odd species actually in captivity. You don't see too many of these getting around. These guys are Latoria bicolor, the northern sedge frogs. These guys uh, were actually, uh, they're a northern territory locality as well. So they did come straight out of the NT. They were wild caught with permits. So once I kind of saw those come up, I thought that was a little bit different to the tree frogs and stuff that I can get in, the, in New South Wales. And I've got myself a little group. I've got five in there now. I unfortunately lost one somewhere in this garage because they 
I tell you what, they've got a spring in their step and that <laughs> little guy just got so far away from me. So hopefully he turns up one day, but I'm not holding my breath too much, oh, unfortunately. I didn't even notice the one on the Miss King nozzle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tiny little guys, yeah. So cute. I have to be very careful opening this enclosure and servicing it and things. It's, it's not something that I take on lightly. So this enclosure here actually houses five leaf tail geckos. Uh, these particular species is, I'm going to butcher the name, but I think it's Salturus Yberba. These guys were another pickup through a friend who uh, actually got them off Jason Rogers himself. Um, I've been pretty lucky this year. I've produced two clutches. Unfortunately, these girls are getting pretty old now, so uh, I'm not sure how viable some of the eggs are. I do have one egg that's growing quite well, so I'm hoping to kind of keep back a few of these geckos just so I can kind of keep a bit of the blood going in the hobby again, just because it's... One of those animals, you don't see a lot of leaf tail geckos in here. Um, they take a little while to mature and, you know, they can be a little bit finicky with heat and stuff like that. They're a little bit of a slow metabolism gecko, which works out really well for me because it means I can just feed them twice a week and kind of give them a good feed and I don't really have to worry about, you know, being in here every day like the velvets and things like that that require a lot more, a lot more time and a lot more patience. And, mm. Now another thing I love about the leaf tail geckos is because they don't have those sticky pads here in Australia, they don't climb all over the glass and things and make a good mess of it like a lot of the, the Strophorus and, and Velvets and Adura and all that, so yeah, they're, they're great little animals. You wouldn't believe there's actually five in here at the moment, I'm actually struggling to see any more right now. Um, but I've only got one male in there, the male I believe is two years old and the females are, well I couldn't even tell you how old they are, they're honestly they're getting up there. They're probably coming towards the la later, later years in life. But um, yeah, awesome little species. They're not particularly great animals if you did want something to handle, but if you just did want to have you know, an animal that can make an awesome display animal and you see these guys out at night, it's quite cool to see these guys kind of running around and hunting and they're pretty, pretty vicious little hunters for <laughs> such a tiny animal to be honest. They're so cool. Yeah. I love how spiky they are. Even just looking at this girl, I'm kind of going, you're looking a little bit skinny. You might have been that one digging around. So there might be a little clutch hidden in there somewhere. So I might have to have a bit of a wander yeah. around and see what's what's happening. That'd be exciting. Most of these little geckos are pretty good at hiding hiding their eggs, should they lay any. So this little tank here is housing my Latoria chloris, my red-eye tree frogs. Probably one of the more common tree frogs in the hobby, especially as far as smaller species go. Um, as you can see, they've got a beautiful enclosure and they don't like sticking around on any of their logs or anything. They love to stick to the glass and make a good mess of it. But that's all right, I don't really mind too much. They make up for it with their beauty. They're awesome little animals. They've got these beautiful little yellow bellies. These guys are sub-adults at the moment. They're, they're still growing up. They could probably get to about another, another third their size again. So they do end up to be a little decent sized frog and they've got quite a quite an interesting call should i say they, they can be quite noisy when they do want to go into full flight so this will be interesting when i do move into an apartment i might have to soundproof some walls or something like that. <laughs> but yeah they're, they're probably the frog out of all the frogs that i own that are quite good at destroying plants i have had a number of plants in here that they've just trampled or you know made a mess of i've had this poor little philodendron that's been trying to grow for god knows how long as soon as it gets a leaf up it just, just seems to get it. crushed <laughs> or goes from there yeah They've uh, made a mess of this poor palm frond as well, this parlor palm. Um, I think that urine's quite strong, to be honest, in a lot of frogs, so that can kind of burn a lot of the, a lot of the palms. <laughs> so I need to try to figure out a way around that. One thing I do find that really succeeds quite well with frogs is uh, the umbrella plants. Wait. <laughs> Back in there you go. Beautiful little animals, that's for sure, but can be quite jumpy. Yeah, they're a gorgeous little frog. This one's actually completely submerged in water too, so it does take a little bit of wow. bit of life to, to kind of get these guys to really take to it. Um, but in particular, this one's, it's bounced back pretty good, should I say. So yeah, it looks good. Most of this terrarium is pretty waterlogged because the whole bottom of it's actually in water. So what I've done in there is I've actually used some um, thick coarse aquarium sponge to essentially make a land area and use some river stones and things to, to kind of piece together a bit of a barrier so just to kind of hold the any soil and bits and pieces that I've put on the top there into place. But yeah, the, the umbrella plant's completely rooted in underneath there now and it holds up to the little frogs that are in here. <laughs> so I've just got my green stream frogs in here. So it's actually one just hiding on that little branch there. 
I can see out at the moment. I believe that's an adult male as well. They're a pretty tiny little species. Yeah. They kind of max out around 30 to 40 millimeters. So they've got a really good call too. Some of my videos, people will know that, you know, I sit here in some of my videos and end up talking to my frogs for a bit because they, <laughs> they kind of just make this little <laughs> sort of call, which is quite quite cute to hear. And, you know, as far as a frog goes, their, their call's pretty, pretty, um, pretty quiet actually. So they're, they're quite a good little frog to have, especially <laughs> if you do, if, or if you are concerned about noise at all. They're a pretty good one. So there's the bioactive exoterra rack in all its glory. Now let's look at a few other similar critters we have just over this way. So this is Oakley, my little she-hoax kink. He's pretty charged up at the moment and he's uh, giving me a pretty foul smelling poo in my hand while you guys are watching this too. I'm not, not going to show you that part. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's an awesome little skink. He's almost like a miniature blue tongue. He eats a lot of dog food. He also eats little crickets and things like that. He's a pretty easy animal to look after to be all like all honest. Um, the enclosure is pretty simple what I've got in here. I do need to try to figure out some more like dry plants or something that I can actually put in there because I do want to put some plants in there with him but for now it's a bit of a bit of a drier setup. But yeah he's a beautiful little animal. I love the tongue flicker on him yeah. too and his super long tail. I'm super jealous of this guy. These guys are pretty hard to come across in captivity uh, available. Not many breeders either. They're such a cool little animal, you know, the way they flick their tongue, they've got a little blue tongue as well. And, um, yeah, wow, what a cool little animal. And, uh, <laughs> he's definitely on the move today. Yeah, he's all juiced up. Yeah, that's a rare little skink you don't get to see very often. And he's absolutely adorable. <laughs> so this enclosure here is actually hold, holding my favourite leaf tail geckos. And this, is, this enclosure is 45 centimetres long, 45 centimetres deep, and it's 90 centimetres tall. Again, I've done a bit of a custom background in the same sort of format as what I've done in a few of those tanks over on the Exoterra wall there. Um, but this has the Cornutus leaf tails in here, so the northern, northern leaf tail geckos. And these guys are one of the biggest, well, I think they are the biggest leaf tail gecko in Australia. Um, currently, my guys are pretty small. I think I've got my youngest individual just, just here. Um, this is an awesome little gecko that I got off a, off a friend, Josh Raymond, from down the south coast. Um, yeah, shout out to Josh. Yeah. I know Josh as well. He's uh, an awesome dude, and uh, I, I think unfortunately, not, well not unfortunately, but I think that's actually a little girl. Uh, which doesn't bother me so much, but I was hoping for a boy just because my other one looks to be definitely a girl. They're Beautiful. awesome little geckos. Their eyes in particular are what just captivates me. They're just those, it almost looks like a little world globe sort of thing with the red kind yeah. of maroon markings with the kind of yellow it's crazy, background. Hey? It's all part of that camouflage for them, I suppose. Yeah. They've got these awesome big leaf like tails, as the name suggests, but just the complete mottling all over, over the place. It makes them just look like a little bit of lichen. In all honesty, it can take me a little while to actually find these guys inside the enclosure during the daytime. During night's not so bad because they're running around like little crazy guys, but during the day, it can be a little bit harder to find them. So yeah, these guys I believe get to about a total length of about 23 centimeters or thereabouts. So yeah, well, wow. pretty decent sized gecko. Like I'd probably say that this one's maybe sort of like 10, 11 centimeters or so now. So I still got a lot of growing to do. That's awesome. Such a pretty little animal. And these guys are not very common to find in captivity, are they? No. Uh, they're, they're still a class one animal, which yeah. is pretty cool, but they're just not, not around a lot. Hmm. So it's, again, it's just, yeah, it goes back to me wanting to just kind of keep those unique sort of animals and hopefully get a few more out there and, yeah. or at least a few more for myself if I'm being a bit cheeky. <laughs> but yeah, at the very least, it's, it's something cool that's, you know, makes an awesome display animal when you do see them like it's kind of a bit of a wow factor especially for these guys when they get a bit bigger now these next critters we're looking at on this bioactive rainforest crusade is actually some animals that used to be mine that i uh sold on to luke and i really don't like selling reptiles you know i always wonder where they go how they're going to live their life and if, if things are all right but it really makes me happy when i see things like this see the animals thriving so well so here let's have a look how my little baby boys are doing now. And they're not really babies anymore, hey Luke? <laughs> no, they've definitely packed on some size since you probably last saw them. Yeah, so there's the beautiful little girl up there. They're getting all their crests and everything now, and now 
I'm super stoked on how this little fella is looking. Look at him, he's getting all big and grumpy. And that is a beautiful little male. I am biased when I say that, of course, these are animals I bred, but that is awesome. When I, when I sold them to Luke, they didn't have any spikes or anything on them. They were just little tiny babies, and now they're doing incredible. And I love seeing them in a beautiful, nice, big setup like this. It's really good. So how have you been liking them, mate? They've, um, they've definitely been fantastic animals. I think I've probably owned the male for uh, about nine months now or so, I'd hmm. say. Thereabouts, um, and the female probably about eight months. Um, awesome little critters, though. Hey, like I, I always got jealous when I was watching your videos and things, and seeing these awesome little dinosaurs hanging out, and just how how beautiful they are as display animals. Like you just don't find anything like this in Australia, apart from the Boyds. I don't think you know mm. the Angleheads are awesome, and I think they're fantastic in their own right. But these guys just yeah. Are, yeah, <laughs> something something different. They're just that next level. In particular, like I mean. I'm a sucker for the males just because they do get all those awesome crests and awesome spotting and different colours and stuff like that through there. But the female's gorgeous in her own rights too. She's got all those beautiful spines down the back of her, which is yeah. really cool. Um, <laughs> little males, pretty Easy, crappy little fella. Yeah, I don't handle these guys at all. You know, they are just a display animal as such. But no, they've been growing like little weeds. They've been doing fantastic in here. They've been destroying plenty of plants, but I've found that the ficus really works for them. As of course you know more. Mm -hmm. More than most, um, yeah, it's definitely, you know, once I saw it on your channel and stuff in there and talked to you a little bit about it, I thought, no, I'd better go and grab myself one of those and plant it in there and it's been doing great. Probably needs a bit of a haircut, but... <laughs> yeah, that's the yeah. only problem you have with them really is you need to cut them back so often because they just do so well. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking forward to, you know, these guys are starting to get a little bit bigger in this enclosure now, so it's probably not too far along the track, so I might need to give them a bit of an upgrade and... See if I can stick them in something slightly larger. Yeah. That should be good. But now they're coming along so good, man. I'm really stoked on that. It's always great. I mean, you'd probably know yourself. You sell on an animal and you just hope that it goes to somewhere that loves it as much as you do. And so when I see something like this, it's just, it just makes me so happy. Well, it's the same as when I get to see my gillens or blotches at your place, mate. Yeah. You know, it's just good, good to see them being loved and well looked after. And yeah, that's awesome. Well, there's nothing more than I like than when, you know, I sell an animal on to somebody and they do keep me updated with its progress and yeah, things. And same, 100%. Especially if it's an animal that I've had for a long time. You know, that makes mm. it even more worthwhile getting those sorts of updates and things on them. So, it's good. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm glad to see they're doing so good. And uh, let's check out the... You think this is the last animal we're going to look at next? Yeah. And these are exciting. very exciting. Something I'm very jealous of. Something that is very, really quite rare and a really specialized little rainforest species. So in here we have Luke's newest additions. You picked them up early this morning, didn't you? Very early this morning, and this is another thanks to, to Jason Rogers. It's, you know, he's been bugging me to take these things for a little while now. So I finally pulled the, pulled the trigger and did it. Uh, I don't regret it at all so far, <laughs> which is good. Uh, they're in a little bit of a temporary setup at the moment. I just need to fix a lid on another enclosure to give them a little bit more space. Well, these little guys, if we can find them, are such unique little animals. They're the only ones in their genus, I believe, too. Mm -hmm. Or at least their, their species as such. And they're very different to most other Australian uh, lizards in their, their kind. That is, of course, a little prickly forest skink. Now, you got a hopeful pair of these. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping they're a pair, but um, I'm not in it for the breeding side of things, I yeah. suppose. It would be awesome if I did have a pair and I was able to crack them. Um, Jason's had them for a couple of years now, and he, he hasn't been able to get any young out of them. Uh, but in saying that, you know, you never know. Um, I might have to speak to a few people about how to sex these little things, because I'm not 100% certain on, on how you do. Um, but yeah. I mean, they'd be fantastic if it was a pair, and I was able to get a few more out of there mm. in the hobby. I don't know of many other people with these, to be honest. I yeah. Think. What's great about them too is they give live birth, and oh, yeah, so cool. They're these... just like tiny little crocodiles, almost. Like, yeah. Got those kind of almost like osterderms, osterderms or whatever they're called. Like the Australian of version of a a uh, what are those red-eyed croc skink, something yeah, like that. Yeah. But these guys live up in the North Queensland rainforest, usually under dead, decaying wood. Or it's really damp, really cool, and uh, nice rainforesty for them. 
Yeah. They like eating, you know, typical sort of insects and stuff. And yeah, what a cool little lizard. Alrighty, so there you have it. Lots of awesome rainforest reptiles. A rare treat for you guys. A lot of animals you don't usually get to see. Big thanks to Luke again for having me over and letting me check out all these awesome animals. And uh, yeah, stick around for the next video. We'll see you next time.